Just a quick reminder, this blog update is best enjoyed with headphones on. Commander Nain, a chief editor of Disabled Gaming Reviews here, coming in with a channel update. So, um, first things first, um, I would like to take control of the first half of the um, update for a well health update, if that's alright with you, Tails. Absolutely, fire away, James. Right, oh, guys, let's crack on with this. So, um, obviously, the medicine changes is yet to start, so I still am having the occasional breakthrough seizure or two. But then again, the main thing is, I've yet to have any grand mals. Now, back to business. Well guys, it seems though know that the, my epilepsy situation seems to be progressing a lot quicker than I originally anticipated. Now don't worry guys, it's meant in a good way though. In my previous update, I mentioned the CT scan just to make sure there is no major underlying causes for my epilepsy getting worse. More specifically, damaged brain tissue. Now, judging by the absolute mess that the NHS waiting lists are in, I was half expecting that this CT scan would be coming around late winter, early spring 2023. Well, let's just say that they dealt a very good hand. About first thing last week, I received a phone call from a hospital like an RKO. Hey, look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Seriously, God damn it, Randy. The phone call was stating that someone who had an appointment for a CT scan either had to reschedule or cancel altogether. As you can probably tell, I've been offered that particular appointment slot. Now, we have accepted that offer with, uh, with neither question nor hesitation. Now, at the time of recording, I should be able to see the result of this CT scan in the next week or so. Now the worst case scenario of all this could be that the CT scan shows that there's been a lot more brain damaged brain tissue than we originally anticipated, which is actually a very common cause of a person contracting epilepsy. Seriously guys, this is how I got it in the first place. Now this would be treated by removing the brain damaged brain tissue through surgery. Obviously your brain is most one of your most important organs in your body. You know, it tells your lungs to breathe and your heart to beat. So, not gonna sugarcoat this one, guys. This operation can be life-threatening. But to be brutally honest, I would rather put my life at risk rather than living the rest of my life in fear of when my next one is going to be. But saying that, if they would have been finding anything major, they would have recalled me by now. So therefore, this worst case scenario is more and more unlikely by the day. Now the best case scenario is of course that the CT scan is showing that apart from the brain tissue damage what I've got from my fall in 2004, there is no additional brand brain damage or at least for my con a cause for my condition to worsen. Therefore, the neurologist for the epilepsy clinic would be dead on right. So the change in my prescription will have gone through by then and the dosage increase to get a better control of my epilepsy should begin. Now as I have said in my previous update the plan is to increase the dosages by increments of 50 milligrams a week until my the dosage level is double the 150 milligrams which I'm taking now. Again if I said before if this is proven to be effective with minimal side effects and would be it would be considered effective case closed apart from annual checks just to make sure that my condition is stable on the opposite side of the coin should the medication to be proven ineffective or if the side effects of the changes of the medication to be seen is either harmful or too much the changing medication would be required now i have been taking the marchogene for over a decade as you may probably be know by now Changing medication can be very risky if not properly managed. If a person changes medication suddenly, just like that, the consequences can be extremely harmful and in some cases even death. This can be completely medicated by gradually decreasing the dosage until the dosage hits a safe enough level for the change to happen. 
than increasing the dosages uh, and the new medication that you are going to be changing to. As you can probably tell, this is probably a lengthy process, which puts me at risk of seizures being happening more frequently. Sucks, I know, but it has to be done, it has to be done. This could mean that the return to normal channel activity would take, be delayed even further. In other case, the bottom line is epilepsy is a condition that simply cannot be cured unless a major scientific breakthrough happens, therefore leading to a better, more effective way of curing the condition completely. Now, with all this aside, it is time for my little two-tailed co-pilot to take over the rest of the update to go over what's going on in the Let's Play side of the channel. Okay, Tails, over to you. Okie dokie, here we go. Miles so far, all the way from Kid Robot in Miami, here with the Let's Play update. Now, as you may have known, the chat review side of the channel is still on the hiatus. So, it is down to us to keep the content flowing in the channel. So, as you may have known, that we recently completed Half-Life 2 Episode 1 for the PC. We originally were planning to tackle Episode 2 shortly after, and then going into Portal RTX. However, NVIDIA made an announcement that derailed those plans completely. They have announced the official release date for Portal RTX. Now, initially, we were anticipating this game to be releasing in January. Obviously, we were wrong. Portal RTX is launching on the 8th of December. Server 1, here we are, and about to officially announce the start date for GGR Play's Portal RTX. Well guys, without further ado, let's look at this. Now, I understand what you guys must be thinking. Hold up on a second, Miles. Would it be made a lot more sense to start the playthrough straight from day one? Well, yeah, let's talk a bit more about this. Yes, we have more than enough processing power to run this game, with RTX enabled. We also understand that in RTX 3070, the GPU the game's upgraded to should be able to run this game with fairly decent settings. However, there is one factor that James, uh, James completely forgot to upgrade, his RAM, random access memory. Currently, the memory James we have installed is creating a bottleneck for the rest of the PC. With the absolute memory hot that was Windows 11, it is of no surprise that additional memory and or higher frequency memory is required to run both the game with RTX enabled and screen recording software running in the background. Now guys, don't worry, we're sorting on this. On the 14th of December, the RAM installed is going to be doubled from 16GB to a massive 32GB of higher frequency memory. But the memory was formally installed was fairly recent by the time James's old processor was installed. Unfortunately, this was before Windows 11 launched. So we thought it was a good idea to have a little extra firepower on the PC before recording RTX enabled games. Alright guys, I think we have covered absolutely everything into this blog update. So we will sign off. This is Miles Sales Power all the way from Kid Robot in Miami, Assistant Manager of DGR Plays Over and Out. And we will see you guys on the 15th of December.